I am Mayor Bradley Wamps, Mayor of the City of Tawnytown, and I have a few people here that I want to introduce to you. First off, we have Mayor Pro Tem Judy Fuller, who really helped put all of this together today. We have Councilwoman Diane Foster in the back. Yes. Councilman Daniel Haynes. We have our Planning and Zoning, Daryl Hale. Hi. We have our City Manager, Jim Weeprick, in the back. So there's a lot of knowledge here to help you at the end if you have additional questions about anything Tawnytown related. The main reason we're here today is to talk about our water and sewer systems, that you have an understanding of how water gets to your house, how water is treated when it leaves your house, and the standards that the state holds us to for both of those. So with that, we have two of our experts today. We have our Director of Public Works, Kevin Smeek, and our Assistant Director of Public Works, Randy Myers here. Now, I'm gonna let you know, today is being video recorded, so that it can be played on YouTube for others to enjoy this experience as well. That camera's in the back. All questions, we're going to hold until the end of it. There's a microphone in the back there. So at the end, when we call for questions, if you have one, simply make your way to the back, speak into the microphone. That way the camera can pick up your voice. It's not going to pick up your lovely face, but it's going to pick up your voice, okay? So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin, and we'll get started today. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yes, um, again, my name is Kevin Smeek, Director of Public Works. I've uh, been employed here at the city since uh, 2000, in June of 2000, so 23 years almost. Uh, started out at our wastewater treatment plant, progressed up, I guess, in the uh, around 2015 to the city office as the assistant to my former boss, and then when he retired, I moved up to the director's spot. So. My knowledge is more for the wastewater side. I'm actually going to turn it over here to Randy first because we're going to start with the water and work our way to wastewater. And he's actually also the uh, um, superintendent of the wastewater or the water plant. So he handles all of the water questions and stuff and reports to the state through the water. So with that, give it to Randy. Randy Myers been here since 2008, 15 years. Started out on the street, moved my way up became Kevin's assistant. Anytime you guys got a question, <clears throat> just call us. Don't be afraid to call us. We're going to answer. You might not like it to answer, <laughs> but we're going to help you. Okay. As you can see the history of the pipes, 50s, water lines, we have some, if Kevin wants to grab one of those. We're actually started a project on Roberts Mill and they actually just cut out some pipe to put new valves in. So we brought samples because everyone's always how hard our water is, how bad our water is. It's so bad. These are from the 50s. There's nothing hardly in them. These were just cut out yesterday. Yeah, they were cut out yesterday. The next one is from the 90s. That was just cut out last week. So as you can see, from the 50s to the 90s, Really not much. Everyone always says about hard water. The hard water is when it gets hot. Take notice your hot water heater blows up. If you turn it on, it's usually the hot water side is slow. If you can take the screen off. <laughs> the calcium gets built up in your screens. We come out, everyone says, we don't have any pressure. We start looking, we find it in your sink screens. We take them off, it works. You have to change them. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. You know, I mean, it's, it's just gonna, just gonna happen. It's in the ground. It's natural. Pretty much, most people will think that you have a water treatment plant. We don't. It's treated at the well with chlorine and just put into the distribution system. We, come, we take it out of the aquifer. It comes up in the well. We treat it with chlorine and it goes out. <coughs> Our guys are here every day, 365 days, every day. Someone's here. We have to test it every single day. Our water quality report, I could go through this, but it's in the handout. It's online. It's posted every year. We have to have it done by, I think it's July 1st. July 1st. We usually try to get it out in April to be ahead of the game. And this is mandated by the state. Okay. Like I said, we only basically treat with chlorine, it just kills 
the bacteria and stuff in the water, which is naturally occurring. We have fluoride in the water, it's just natural. We don't inject fluoride. We, we don't have to do that. Like I said, it comes out of the well house, it gets treated, it goes into the system, it goes in the holding tanks. The holding tanks are for the pressure in the city. If you're close to the tanks, unfortunately, you're going to have low pressure. The further you go away, the more pressure you're going to have. Most people don't understand that, but the health flows down. You would think it would be the other way around, but usually the tanks are on the highest spots in the city, and then it just flows out. By the, by the tank over here, I think it's like 4850. And down by flow sir, it's pushing 90. So it's all based off of gravity. <coughs> how much gravity is pulling the water down and pressing it into the ground? That is, that is how you get your pressure. There's no, matter, we don't have pumps on it. Once it pumps out of the wells, there's no pumps on it. It is it's all gravity. Really pressure from what <coughs> gravity gives. We actually brought three three types of meters, the oldest to the newest. This is this, not the oldest. <laughs> some of the original ones, probably, that they started switching over to. Then it went to the next version. And of course, now we're in the digital version, which they can tell us a whole lot of stuff. Like we know if you want to the wire and sense it, we're, we, <laughs> we know. And they're all GPS, the new ones are GPS. So we're working towards a system, hopefully, to make our lives easier with reading. I started here, we took almost two weeks to read them, we're down to one day. So saving money saves the price. And there's all kinds of home filtration. If, I know we get the phone calls a lot. Why don't you guys put filters on your wells? You're talking millions and millions of dollars on each one. Guess where? Guess who's going to pay for it? We have, we have to raise the rates, raise taxes. I personally do the screw-on filter. I can see it, get the clear glass, you can see it, because if you don't maintain the other ones, it causes issues. The water softeners are the worst. <coughs> Kevin had experience on his own. If you don't maintain it, you don't clean it, they stick. And guess what happens? The water just continuously runs. Then that makes your water go high. <laughs> this is the the famous one. No one believes this. You know how many times we get a phone call, nobody believes this. I brought this from a couple of my friends at LB Water where we buy our stuff. A 16th inch hole for 90 days is 74,000 gallons of water. I got enough to hand out to whoever wants some. It's amazing. When we tell people there's no way when you show them, <laughs> it's there. We, we are not required to check the toilets. We tell our guys, Please help everybody out. Show them. Show them. Show them, show them everything. So he mentioned how a 16th inch hole is <coughs> a substantial amount of water, 74,000 gallons. If you go up to a quarter inch hole, you're at over 1.1 million gallons in 90 days. So I just want to Feel free to grab one of these. That way if people start telling you their water bills are outrageous, you'd be like, well, this says if you have this size hole, you're wasting that much water. Is that like based on the gravity you're talking about, or is that accurate? That's 60 psi, and it's usually we're close to that. You know, when the pumps are running. So how does that? I mean, I, I agree it, it's less water, but especially when you have teenage boys, as far as clogging toilets go, what's the ratio for plumbing issues when you have that? This is just basically leaks when the toilet's just constantly running okay. on the clogs. That's more on the sewer side of it. I'm really not answering that. Because the lower flow toilets, the holes, that yeah. often plumbers are expensive too. So oh, I yeah. just wondered if there was any information as far as how it, it was pressure and pushing down more on the lower. Well, the low flow, low flow toilet should have the mechanism inside to use less water, so that gives you more more force when it flushes. So something else must, might be going on. No, I mean, my, I'm not having a problem with yeah. that. I just didn't right. We're, we're going to hold questions to the end so that everyone has a chance we can kind of get through. So that some of your answers may be, or some of your questions may be answered through the presentation. So hang out till the end. We'll do a lot of questions then. This is the famous one. There's no way my tool is leaking. I, I don't hear it. Right there. It runs straight over the tube, straight down, right out. 
You don't see it, you don't hear it. Keep them down at least an inch to an inch and a half. There's a, there's a line mark on them. That's, it's for a reason. And just as a thought, I've been to houses right after a plumber replaces that and they did not set it. It's so a don't assume that it's going to get done. Our guys are not supposed to do it, <laughs> but I know I've worked out in the field. We do it. We'll help you adjust them. We'll show you how to adjust them. We'll adjust them for you. We're not required to do that, but we do do that. <laughs> this is... That's mine. This is, <laughs> this is a story of a gentleman whose water bills were thousands of dollars. <clears throat> he, it took him months to figure out. They had to set up a, a video camera. His cat spent all day flushing his toilet. <laughs> over and over again. And he just liked to hear it. And if the toilet seat was up, he would jump down and he'd look inside and he would just watch it. So you'd be surprised at where those water leaks can come from. <laughs> That reading the meters, we kind of just went over them a little bit. Like I said, we're we're trying to get the technology to make it quicker, which we can get it done quicker. It saves time. We don't have to raise rates to pay for the. Look for hopefully this year a big push of us coming out to change meters over to the new style. It's for a reason. You know, what I mean, we got to save time, keep our guys busy. We have eight guys to do all the work. That's it, and we're going around everywhere. What do you, what? How long back? How many years back would you consider that the meter is not the new style? Oh, it's probably within the last 10 years, though, I would go. Mm -hmm. okay. So if we're going back 15, 16 years, guaranteed it's going to be the older yeah. type. Yeah, you'll see the brass instead of the plastic. You know, are you on care of us, though? Yes. Most of the original ones are the brass, the brass. big one inch. But we're, <coughs> we've been switching them over to the plastic as they have problems. If Kevin holds up the MXU, that's what sends the signal to our handheld radio. Mm -hmm. When that goes bad, we change both. We just change them out both. So if we, we wanted, we take a hammer and hit it, and then you'll have to go back to <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll charge you 500 bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you talk about the MXUs, can you talk a little bit about the batteries, lifespan? The lifespan of the batteries, they tell us 20 years. I'm going to say, we get 20 years, I'm happy. 15, we start seeing some issues. It's just like everything else. So you're not going to automatically now start changing them out? Some of the older sections we will, but like out in Carol Vista, the newer sections, when we, we get a reading, it'll send back question marks to my guy, and then we know something's wrong. We'll, we'll put it on your water bill. We need to check your meter slash MXU. When we come out, that's usually what the problem is. It's not because you use too much water. It's because something's, the battery's died. And when you get that on your water bill, it's going to be an estimated reading because we couldn't get actual numbers out of that machine. So when you get that and it's in red letters, contact the city office, that way they can come out, replace it, and get you a true reading of that. We do three of those. And then we send you a letter, hey, we're going to shut your water off. It's to get your attention because it's going to save you. We've had it in the past where people ignored it, ignored it, ignored it. And then they, when we finally called us, they owed thousands of dollars. Like, we're trying to help you. Then there's also cases where we owe you because you know the estimated too high, and then the ladies in the office will just give you a credit on the bill, and it'll all work out in the end. Thank you. Just please, when you see that, just call. Can you talk about how to read the meters to check for water? Yes. <coughs> on the new ones, Kevin's going to hold up a new one. I'm going to walk around on this. Yeah. There's a there'll be a light that blinks when there's water flowing. It's a little round circle that blinks. It's yeah. technology, right? <laughs> Is that for the really old houses? Not the only numbers we read are the ones that have <laughs> the, <laughs> dot, the hash <laughs> number. Yeah, the, we're like, those four numbers. The, no, the, if you have a white room, the only one that's going to blink. If, okay. if Mayor Wentz holds that one up, yeah. there's a dial on this one. See out in the, that the turns. When there's water, yeah. water, yeah. water yeah. turning, it turns. Well, the really old ones, I don't think we have very many of those left. I think it's a triangle on the other one. But when you know there's nobody home, nobody home, you're not using any dishwasher, washer, or nothing. Find your find your water meter. Go down and watch. If it's moving, you gotta leave somewhere. If you can't find it, call us. We'll come try to help. That's all we can say. And I'm gonna say thank you because you have. 
the wrong time to come to my house. I'm looking for water. I mean, you guys have been raised. Yeah, that. yeah. Our guys will help you do whatever. All we ask is just give them respect. So while he's going around showing that to you, the reason it's so important to find your leaks and eliminate them is the more water we pull out of the ground to deliver and it's not actually being used, that counts against us with what the state allows us to put out. So we have allocations. If you watch our city council meetings, which are so exciting, you should watch them. Every month we have to allocate water. That way we know how much is being delivered, is supposed to be delivered. And if it goes up, we're going to have issues with the state. So we want to make sure that our water system is as tight as possible. That means fixing leaks in our pipes, and also make sure that your pipes don't leak as well. Speaking of that, we actually have listeners through the whole city. We're one of the first ones that have done it in the area. They take a reading every night at 2 a.m. in the morning. Every Thursday or Friday, at least twice a month, our guys take the laptop out and they ride past them. It sucks in all the information. If it comes up with a hit, we send our other guys out and they start researching to see where the leak is. Don't be, don't be surprised you get a knock on the door and say, hey, you got a leak. How do you know? The list are the It saves a lot of hassle. Our, our water system is really, really tight. I think it's below 10% walls. Right, Jim? I think it's somewhere around 10%, which is amazing. Question back on one of you. First slide, the water system is tight. Yes. Yes. Two wells, 15 and 16. Yep. One of them is right near me, and the house is directly behind me. Right. What is the flow of that water after it leaves that it goes, treatment house? Does it go into the city and then back no, to us? If you, you guys catch it as it comes out. As it's flowing out, it's serving your community and goes out. If the wells are if the wells are running, your pressure is probably going to be a little higher because it's pumping it out to the system. And then we actually, we had a meeting with Ruth and a couple of them the other day to go over some infrastructure things, what you guys are responsible for and what we are. And the question arises, I called my guys, they went right out. They looked at it, it was 52 and 58, I think. Yeah. And the wells were off, they were getting ready to kick on. So you, they're probably up in the 60s when it's running. Our pressure. Yeah. yeah. But then, but is, is there like excess then that from our wells that would end up back in the city. Yeah, whatever whatever goes out, what you guys don't consume, it, it goes out into the system. I, I heard that it goes out and then comes uh, back in, like two different sets of it's pipes. It's one pipe that comes out, one pipe, that, the same pipe that comes back in. Okay. So you guys catch it as you, as you need it coming out. <coughs> and when, obviously when the pumps are not running, it's coming from the tanks. Mm -hmm. or, or just yeah. to clarify, are you saying as a distribution, like a separate distribution goes through a loop, return loop back to the system? When it's uh, when you're distributing, you have a supply and then a return loop. It's all on a loop. It's and yeah, it's just one pipe. One pipe. There are two wells. It all connects together in Carroll Vista, and it comes out. I think at the first entrance of Carroll Vista. But you got manifolds that are distributing everywhere. But I'm saying the main line it returns back. To it the goes. System. It goes into the system. Okay. Yeah. One last at Carroll Vista, when the wells are pumping, it's forcing out and moving the water in town. As soon as the wells are shut off, the tanks take over and pressure pushes back towards Carroll Vista. Same with all the other houses. It just it's wells are on, you're pretty much getting groundwater right almost right away. Yeah. But once a well shut off, static pressure. static pressure comes in for the And this is gonna go over to Kevin, he's the more expert of the <laughs> wastewater week. We work it together, but this is his yeah. Thanks, Randy. So, wastewater, when it comes into your house, when your water comes into the house, whether you are running your sink, flush a toilet, it then goes down into your pipes and out into the collection system. Uh, collection system is a gravity system to the lowest points in your area. There are actually five lift stations that um, Meads Crossing has one. There's one up here in the Creekside development. Carol Vista has one. Uh, there's a little Windy Hills development on Trevanion Road that has half of its development on. Uh, if you live on the north side of Roberts Mill Road 
everything on that everything on that side of Robertsville Road towards the PA line flows to the a pumping station at the bottom of York Street below the Hitchman, which then once it gets there, it's pumped up over the hill on York Street, gravity the rest of the way out to the plant. So it's sewer's so pretty collection system is pretty simple. It's pretty much as long as you don't get a clog in it, it's going to flow out. But to your question with the toilets, yes, I have a teenage son, and yes, it does clog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and with the sewer system, because and that's where actually people look for water bill. It's really the sewer that costs the most. Now, yes. I have also done a lot of things to try to save on my water bill in the mm -hmm. past. The problem is, I will say at one point because I was pinching it so tight. Probably 30% of the water that came in my house did not go into the sewer system because I would put, I would use my bath water to water plants. I used, you know, organic soap. Um, you know, we did certain things where we only flushed the toilet so much, or we had a pail. And when the kids were little, because it was even easier and less mess. You know, there were a lot of things we did, but we still paid the same no matter what came in. Unfortunately, with that, there's not a way to put a meter on that water because on the water side the meter comes in it's pressurized the pipes always full with the the sewer lines the gravity lines if you put it try to put something on there they're going to have to actually have a paddle in there or some kind of a wheel and again the clogging of the toilet you put too much in it it clogs you have to plunger it those toilet paper rags or whatever somebody fl a kid flushes a matchbox down the toilet oh, something it could it could clog up that a device in that so it's that is the norm for how the, the meters and water distribution collection payments are made by you uh, what water you consume <coughs> through the meter is just the sewer part of it is uh, a higher cost um, and actually there is a paper that I did work on the past couple of days here uh, that shows you and this is just the chemicals that we purchased to treat the water between the water side and the sewer side and as you can see the sewer side is extremely more costs like, a lot more the water side's fifty six hundred dollars last year the sewer side was one hundred and sixty four thousand that's yeah, just I the meet MDE requirements literally uh, the chlorine that we use to treat the water before it goes into the distribution system to drink or not drink your preference um, we only have to Every other year, we're making two orders of 10 cylinders. On the wastewater side, unfortunately, when you have the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and all that, what you're creating by food waste, rinsing dishes off, we have to treat that at the plant. So we have a chemical micro C, which actually helps the organisms out the, because everything out at the plant is done by a uh, biological treatment so we have tiny little organisms that are just going crazy for all that nitrogen and phosphorus that we produce and we waste into the system unfortunately you sometimes need extra food to help them do their process so the micro C uh, thinking on there Randy we used to be buying that in four, four 250 two. gallon totes yeah. and that was literally six thousand dollars i think sixty five hundred if you look already the cost of the sewer plant right now this year we're only and that's from july 1st july 1st of 2022 that's to 100 we're at right 109,000 right now because everything keeps going up it's we're going to hold questions to the end if we could that way you can keep going and try to uh, answer did he say chloramine chlorine so you're using chlorine we're using chlor chlorine okay. gas to disinfect and then at the treatment plant we have to use sulfur dioxide because you cannot put a um, water back into the into nature into the stream with chlorine and you can cannot have a residual so you take oh, that's fine. That's it takes half of <clears throat> if you use 100 pounds of chlorine it takes 50 pounds of sulfur dioxide to remove that chlorine back out of the water so it is basically like a you're never even touched it so if we put the chlorine in the water, you're going to see fish kills and everything down the stream because anybody that's had a, an aquarium, if 
you don't treat the water and take the chlorine out from the tap water, mm -hmm. your, your fish die. So, I mean, that's just how nature works there. I mean, at our treatment plant, I mean, this is an eight picture of our treatment plant. We have, it's a sequence batch reactor, so everything is done in two tanks. While one is filling and taking the waste in, the other one is polishing off and getting ready to discharge to the stream. So, and then they just reverse. It's about a two and a half hour process. Fill to decant and discharge to the stream. And that is uh, roughly, we have uh, 10 cycles. Each tank does five cycles a day. There. And then with that, we also have, uh, with that process, the microorganisms, they re reproduce. We have to treat that, dewater the, the excess amount of microorganisms. We press the, we drain the water off of it, press it out into a cake uh, solid. It's roughly about 18 to 20 percent solids. Uh, and it's, it's not human waste. It is actually the microorganisms. It is, it is tested. We have to, again, meet some high standards to be able to way get that process product to where we actually land apply it to farmland where they're growing field corn for anything that is not consumed by humans as the first product so we couldn't take uh, let's say carrots potatoes anything you want to grow in the ground like that that you can consume raw that is a no-go. It has to be something that is going to be processed at least two, one to two more times after it is picked before it can be consumed by a human. But that is that is the nature of the cycle. It's happening when when a farmer is just using regular manure from a cow. Same process, except we're using the products, waste products from the treatment plant. I don't know if you have. Just, I just want to add one thing about, this is just the chemicals. The electric bill at the sewer plant for one month is higher than all eight wells. Just, that's, everyone always asks why is the Our sewer price higher? Average more. electric bill at the treatment plant is $10,000. All eight month. wells is 5000 And then that doesn't count the five list stations in town that are running all the time. So, and they, they pretty much equal out to what the wells are pumping or electric are wrong. So right now, electric bill is $10,000 more on the sewer side than what the water side is. Every month. Um, projects here in town right now, uh, we've been trying to eliminate I&I, &I, which is inflow and inf infiltration into the um, sewer system. We have two pipes over there. It's your turn to hold them up right. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Original piping in Tawny Town was uh, clay terracotta pipe, which is basically pottery. <laughs> if you know anything about pottery, uh, that glazing on the side, once it is, is worn off, it basically, basically becomes a sponge. So it is soaking in, which costs run, up, run our costs up at the plant, because if we're treating just groundwater coming into the system, costs are going up. So we've been doing projects uh, we've replaced a um, half of a Meadowbrook interceptor line. We did a complete dig and replace of that. We were seeing about, Jim, uh, easy six figure reduction, I think. Yeah, I mean, it was a couple hundred thousand gallons of reduction in I&I, &I, just in that section. Um, right now, the project we have, some of you that, if you're living over here, <coughs> Fairground, Ave or Fairground Avenue, around the school, the elementary school, if anybody's been by, you can probably, if you go in King's Drive, we've cleared a lot of trees because there's a, a gravity line that is made of terracotta running right along the stream from the 50s. And we're in the process of repairing that, either dig and replace Fairground Avenue. We have a lot of uh, what we call slip line. It's a, it's a company called In Situ Form. It looks like a piece of felt that they pull in that it has chemicals embedded into the material. And when they produce a hot water or a steam and blow it up to inflate it into the uh, pipe, it actually cures and looks like a piece of PVC pipe. With that pipe, it basically seals off all the I&I. &I. We reduce 
water coming into the system. So hopefully with all these projects we're doing, we start to see reduction in I and I, which again lowers our cost. Does it mean we can lower water and sewer bills? Hopefully we can. That is that is the end goal is to see if we can reduce, we can help the citizens out. But right now with what your water bills and stuff are at right now, we actually are doing these projects by money that we have brought in from the uh, water and sewer bills. So and growth. And growth, yes, growth helps there too. Um, also, uh, some of the money from the ARPA funds that the federal government has given out through COVID, we're using all that to clean up our system and try to reduce the cost, which saves you. All of this money we're using that we have had in the bank means we're not going out to loan. We go out to loan. Unfortunately, loans have to be repaid. How do we take and repay loans? We have to interest or increase rates to cover these loans. So it's, we're trying to be fiscally responsible by keeping our bills as low as we can, but still making sure we maintain and are able to repair lines that are already in the system. If we, if we don't do that, we're just gonna continue to have to take loans out, which means rates go up. And actually I can speak to rates, born and raised here in Tawnytown, Moved to uh, Littlestown, PA when I uh, married my wife 19 years ago. My water bill, and I check it quarterly, <laughs> compared to here in town. I use about 18,000 to 20,000 gallons a, a quarter, and I'm paying anywhere from 50 to $75 more than I would for the same amount of water here in town. And they do the same process of just pumping it out of the ground into the tanks and treating it with chlorine, it's the same process. Captain, can I ask you for three numbers to help put I and I in perspective? You shouldn't, I'm sure you know them. <laughs> Daily, how much do we, how many gallons do we typically put through the wastewater treatment plant? Dry weather, yes. if we would be do treating just the, what was coming from the wells, Yep. In the water system, we should be roughly at the 450,000 gallons a day, which is what the water system produces. How many gallons is the treatment plant able to process in a day? Uh, we are permitted for 1.1 million gallons a day. Okay. When we have a large rain event, like the one where we had what, 12 inches in how many hours, how many gallons were put through that wastewater treatment plant because of our I and I issues? The day where we had the 24 inches and we had all kinds of, that was nearly 5 million gallons that went through the plant. So that's storm water that made its way into the sewer pipes because of cracks, uh, other leaks, issues in that way. We had surcharging manholes because of these issues as well. That all goes into the sewer system and then we essentially treat rainwater, which we don't want to treat rainwater. So that kind of gives you an idea. When we have a heavy rain event right now, until we get all of our I and I issues resolved, that's the result in the wastewater treatment plant, which is why we're taking such a huge effort to catch up on and fix these I and I issues. One of them is Roberts Mill Road. People talk and, about that. And Roberts Mill Road. Some of you live on Roberts Mill Road. We are doing a basically a mini streetscape. Most of you know what we went through with the state highway going. East Baltimore Street, West Baltimore Street, replacing all the water mains, sewer mains, um, storm drains. Right now on Roberts Mill Road from the Senior Center all the way to Roth Avenue, all of the infrastructure on that, which is some of the oldest infrastructure in town, is being repla completely replaced. So, I mean, that's another, there is another I and I issue there. There are some crack pipes, settled spots. And I, I'm looking at you because I know we've had issues right in front of your house. I mean, I've been here long enough. I know exactly where I where I have my issues at and where we try to make sure we're out there on a regular basis. With this project, hopefully I'm not out there on that street as much. It saves my guys to do other stuff. Just, for our guys. just so you know, when I started here, I started right when Streetscape started. We were pumping 680,000 gallons of water a day. After all those pipes got fixed, we're pumping 450,000 with all the growth. So all that water was just... We were losing a lot of water before that project. So hopefully, and the water main on Roberts Mill Road, we already know, 
there's probably I've been in per personally 14 of those holes. There's, there's, more. There's, probably, <laughs> there's probably 30 what we call band-aids on it. It just looks like a clamp that goes on the pipe. And with that, just so everybody's aware of what our guys do, that pipe cannot be shut down because the valves don't work. So when it's minus 10, they're getting wet. They're that's, actually water why, that's actually why those insertive valves are being put in, so we can actually turn the water off. They're in water off to their waist most of the time water. in the freezing cold. I'm seeing you guys in there. Yeah. One and went to my house. A year and a half ago, we actually had a uh, water main break on uh, Bumgarner Avenue. Oh my goodness! Pretty much drained the system till yeah. it, it blew out, and until we could get it isolated, because we had so many valves, we had to go so far out. We pretty much. I think we ended up turning off 28 valves to get it shut off. We should have only been four, and it, it drained the tanks. And with that particular one, it was discovered. I think because the road had actually lifted up, Bumgarner Avenue, with all of the water leaking out, it actually lifted the road up and broke the pavement up. And that was in, in part due when we repaved the road, we did, uh, to actually help try to maintain the road for a longer period of time, we put a uh, paving fabric on the underneath. So we milled the road, they laid a piece of probably a quarter inch felt down, it's called paving fabric, they, they say it adds about the average of an inch and a half of hard blacktop. So when that paving fabric, paving fabric, when the water line broke, it came up. It actually held the water in, and it basically your, the whole road looked like a waterbed. You walked out there, and it was just waves. <laughs> the um, repairs and uh, improvements. Are you doing that mainly in house, or do you subcontract some of that? All the the projects right now, they're all. Um, we had put out the bid, and we have a contractor doing the work. We we do not, yeah, we're not staffed enough to do that much. But everyday repairs, water main breaks, things like that, that, we do in house because response time has to happen immediate. Um, we have the abilities, we have the the parts to take care of those. Now, sometimes when it comes to when you have to rip up a road, we we'll have a contractor come in and actually relay the road at that point. Unless we have three at one time, like we've had many times, yeah, we have we have to call people, and we can only splitting people up so much. And Kevin, so much Kevin and I come in and put our boots on and get in there with them. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> Do you want to mention the water Yes. I actually live in Emmitsburg, which some of you know. They have not raised their rates in years. It's in the process now. They want to raise the rates 150%. 150%. Thank God we have some council members like we have good says, well, we can't do that to people, you know? That's, that's too much. And I myself live by myself with my dog. My water bill is 240 bucks a quarter. Now, the water bill, now. Just imagine what it's gonna be if they wanna raise 150%. And Our sewer is three times the water. Damage. I'm gonna go back to something Randy said about the water softeners. They are good, but he is right. I had mine, it went, uh, the O-ring broke on the bypass and it actually was sending water out through what it was trying to regenerate constantly. When I got my water bill in Littlestown, I went from what usually is 250 to $300 to an $800 water bill. Mm -hmm. so and besides the water softeners, or something you recommend that you see works? Just a regular filter. That is, that is all personal preference to the homeowners. I, as far I'm as not, it relates to the water bill. Oh, yeah. It, it, <laughs> Not, I know it's a preference, but as far as you see how it relates to what comes your way and our bill. Because I wouldn't know to check the over. Yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. I got the water bill and I, I was like, what's <laughs> going on? I immediately went to every fixture where there was a valve I could shut off, started shutting off one at a time and leaving it off and going down and checking my meter. Because again, on the meter, mine is an older brass meter and I could actually see the red dial and it looked like a second hand on a clock just ticking away. I ended so you can up. Change it to something else. Like I said, just and I, I know it's. I didn't. I actually turned the water softener off, and I do not Same even use it because when I bought the house, it was there. Gotcha. I had it serviced on a yearly basis, and then when that happened, I just said, "Never had a water softener living here in town when I was growing up." Using the same, it's the same water. We're getting. We're actually the, we're on the same aquifer. The Little Towns on same aquifer. Emmitsburg's on. So I mean, everybody's we're treating the same water they are. So I was like, okay, been using it my whole life. About the only thing I have is a Brita pitcher that I fill up at the sink to let it filter through, and that's it. 
I don't think that's the way. <laughs> that is right. So my recommendation, if I could, I installed a water softener in my house um, because I was going through water heaters like you wouldn't believe. Um, but as opposed to just doing the softener, I put in two filters ahead of the softener. That way you're cleaning the water before it gets to the water softener, which then less chance of it degrading because we do have hard water. It's, there's no lie about that. Um, but I actually have it filtering twice before it gets to that. And that whole system, I installed it myself, only cost me 500 bucks for all of that. And I got it from Lowe's, I put it in myself. And I haven't gone through a single appliance, everything runs perfectly at this point. How often do you need to filter? I'm sorry? How, the filters for those, how often do, do they need to be changed? The one filter that has to be changed is every six months. The, it's a small one. Another one is a large canister that's good for six years. And you actually yeah. change the whole canister. Though. In February 22, mm -hmm. I went switch from the propane water heater to electric. Mm -hmm. It failed in nine months. Mm. Wow. Turn bulb came out, pulled the elements out. They were so crusted with yeah. calcium. Mm -hmm. One of them actually burst and failed. So I put the water softener in. So I'm hoping I won't have that same issue. And with that being said, every so many months, you should turn the power off to the to the hot water heater and actually drain it and make sure you're pulling those whatever the when the calcium actually precipitates into a hard uh, a solid form instead of in the water. You get that all those little white flakes. You actually drain it and flush the hot water heater out. But make sure you turn the power off first because if you don't, you're going to burn all the the elements are going to you're going to blow. Well, I just show I just kind of prove how it's not that. I mean, it's a tedious process. I do it myself at my house. Like I do, I shut the thing off, drain it completely, open it up, and I actually have an attachment for um, my wet dry vac. I will actually go in there and empty out all of that calcium buildup. And 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 calcium is not dangerous to us. I mean, we don't want to drink it. You see the big chunks. It's not like it's a hidden thing, but it does mess with your appliances. So that's just kind of a, a personal preference, but really the hot water heater is the only thing. Like it seems to all get trapped there and then I don't have to worry about it through the other uh, utility stuff. And to go on with Judy, I just had to learn how to do that. And I had left it go too long. And when you take the coil out, like literally I was digging. Yeah. And our, our water heater lasted a long time when we didn't have any water softener. It lasted well beyond what they said it would last because we maintenanced it. But it's the, when you take out the coils, I mean, we I had to go and take out the coils and because I don't do this regularly, nor did I think about it, but you can dig out all that stuff mm -hmm. and it'll last a little bit. But most people, it'd be nice to have a cheat sheet of what we don't know, you know? Well, and, and, and uh, okay, first you don't know what this. you don't know. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. But uh, once upon a time, we had talked about doing some programs in town to just do some easy teaching, you know, how to, replace a trap in your sink or or you know things like that um it just kind of never took off that's not off the table that doesn't mean it'll never happen i was brought up by a contractor so i do know how to do those things i can take a toilet out i can do those things but the the toilet you know these toilet things are really um the easiest fixes um because these seals down here will go back and you know the uh, I've seen a toilet where this seal went bad, and the and the water just continuously flowed. They never saw it, but it was continuously flowing into the bowl, like it was just a stream. And I had to actually show them. Look, look, do you see the water that's trickling down? That's a leak. You have to replace that. Um, so again, our guys are fantastic, though, because if you call them. They will help you. They will tell you how to do stuff. They will give you instructions. They will come out and show you. Um, most of them will say, we're not supposed to do this. But right, but they'll say they're not supposed to, but they do it anyway. If the flapper goes bad, we do have uh, dye tablets that you can drop in your tanks to see if that flapper is bad. It actually will, it'll turn, it'll, you drop the, I mean, it's not a drop of orange, little pills right. you put in there. It'll turn the, turn the water in the tank green. Just go away for a while, let it come back, and if if your bowl is green, your flapper is bad. But now, if go back to the last slide, but if it is going over, if it's going out the overflow, if you have it adjusted too high, you're not going to see the green in the tank. 
that goes straight into the waste waste stream right out the pipe. So if you have it adjusted too high, you're not going to see it with those pads. Before you change that picture again, like the little lever thing, and again, because. No, the other one. This one? That right there. Um, some of them are a little tricky, and they will actually, what I've discovered, keep it up. And yeah, keep the it chain, yep, the, the chain, chain, the chain up. catches yeah. on it. You have to make sure you adjust your chain properly. I don't properly, know how many doesn't. times my one toilet, I changed that out and readjusted the chain. And every once in a while, because the kids, I have to go back in. That chain is a pain. I, I mean, I didn't even think to look there. A lot of people don't. You just think to look at the flapper, but that... Thing, if it's if it's hitting against something in your toilet, it can be some problem <coughs> because it, it, it kept my flap. It was just a little bit; you could barely tell, but it was keeping it up just about. And I only knew from you guys a long time ago coming out to look at the toilet because my husband used to my husband took care of that stuff. But it was barely you could barely see, but it was holding my flap open. Yeah, I, I've trained my mom since my dad passed the night, and she checks it twice a month. She goes down and looks at the mirror, and she just. Make it, make it happen. And actually, so speaking if you know nobody's home, and you're not running nothing. Speaking of these, there are um, what we call the guts of the tank. Uh, I actually purchased one from Ace in Littlestown, where when it over when when it when I flush, there was there's a catch cup here that fills up with water. But if that flapper gets stuck open, like you said, how the chain help holds it up, it actually had a set point that if it did. If it did not fill up to where that float kicked it off after so after a minute, it's the actual um, stem coming up where the fill tube is shut off. What's the name of that? I, I, it, but it was just basically it was just a little flapper. When you flush the toilet, that 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 little catch cup dumps but too, and then it, okay. it actually okay. it actually would be part of this stem right here. Okay. Um, if we do questions, can we have you guys stand at the microphone just so we can make sure that the camera catches it? From here on out, I wasn't thinking about that. Are you guys ready to start yeah. doing question, question, and answer? Anything. <laughs> Not just about the water and sewer. We can help you. We'll help you. Yeah. The, um, on the analysis sheet, you showed hardness of 17.1 ppm, I guess that is. Parts per million, yes. Is that a constant you try to maintain, or is that very that is that's an average that is what that's an average of what's coming that's out of the ground we don't we we don't have anything softeners or anything to change that that is you what is in the ground what the, the maximum and the min generally is to get to uh, that average I what that is yeah I mean, i'll give you my card and then you, you i'm just curious because like you know the, we put the softener at 20 yeah thinking that it was 16 but if it's really 17 Maybe I'd want to be a little higher on myself. I, you know. Yeah, that is a good question. I I don't know exactly what the number is coming out of the ground. Um, that's one of the contam uh, con not contaminants. That's one of the um, kind of processes we test for on a not reg as regular basis because it's not regulated by the state. And speaking of the testing, just so everyone's aware, our guys test. Every day we write down how many hours of the pumps run, the chlorine, the whole nine yards, and then we have a we have to have a contractor come in for the state and they test twice twice a month in different areas. And they they actually test eight different locations of each month that are not run by the city. There are home homeowners that actually that, that was set up well before I was yeah. up in the office that the con the contract lab goes out, they draw a sample, they actually test for and then the state comes and does their test. So it's constantly being monitored all the time. And then whatever we report, I've reported every month, the lab reports at the end of their test. If it's, something's not right, our phones are ringing, we fix it. And one thing we didn't talk about, you want to grab that court, or the, the broken, no. where they repaired. Uh, I guess during one of our two snowstorms this year we had where we had to actually put some salt down on the road on george street had a uh, pipe break well right on the uh, main and that is a, that is an old fitting oh. and it was just a, a galvanized uh, elbow that blew out and basically the homeowner called in said that it was coming up out of the curb stop on her at the street and once again couldn't get it shut off they had water in her face the whole time. 
but it's literally so they're done. Almost five hours to repair that to get it dug up and get the, everything set up to be able to fix that repair. <coughs> so, and then once they fix that, they turn around. The guys that were there were out on the street solving right after that. So, so we do we do it all. Like there's like so there's only eight people, and then there's three at the sewer plant that do it all. A lot of times, don't be surprised if you don't see Kevin and I in the dump truck or running the backhoe because we just don't have the staff sometimes to take care of the problems without on people when we try to take care of ourselves. Next question. The, I've got, I got a couple, but that, that, that staffing kind of touches on it a little bit. Um, I was curious if you guys actually have like the, the bandwidth or the capacity to steal a couple of videos from YouTube or something like that with tutorials for stuff like this, where people, or, or you can make your own and be a star, but um, you gotta know. If they That's have. actually, we were talking about that the other day. We want to take a walking tour of the wastewater treatment plant and put it out. It's just once again staffing. But then also how to right, videos right. for your basic that makes up. I can appreciate customer service. I do yeah. that. I'm industrial maintenance been doing that and then for the, twenty five Basically the, like that guys. that will take probably forty five minutes of my side, but the well will take five minutes because it's really you know it's simple. Well and that's why I'm wondering if you guys have the capacity to post something like that on a town page in the utilities group. Yeah, you know, if there's a yeah. subdivision or we something. Actually, I'm not I'm not digitally you know savvy but where you can borrow something that's going to take two or three minutes to go yeah. and walk people through, so you don't have to go to every single house. But but yeah. I definitely appreciate that that level of customer service. I missed the, um, I guess the the chemical you know treatment. But I'm curious. I used to really have a, a chlorine smell in my water, and I loved that. I know mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was sanitized. You're, you're the only one. I, I know <laughs> the water had been been sanitized. Yeah. So that's why I was curious. Did you guys? You said you're using chlorine now. Yes. So yeah, we always have chlorine. You're gas. using gas form, so I'm not that yeah. familiar, but. Do you guys measure what's actually going out? Yep, okay. every day. Where is that? Where, where are you running? We, we do it at one, each, we, two, we, uh, av we like to average like a 1.2, 1 1.4, okay, so which we can go up to a four, but we don't want that because then And then do you, space do you like occasionally like shock the system or something? Yep. Where you, no, it's just stay maintained like that. Yep. yep, that's why we test every day. Like our guys go in if something doesn't look right or we have to adjust because the groundwater changes when it rains, snows, what have you, you know, stir stuff up. Right. We'll bump it up a little better. Bump. Sometimes we, most of the time, we bump it down because it's too hot. And I know to, to a point that she had made, I, I'll be out of y'all's hair just a minute, but uh, I know that they do make sensors that can actually measure the flood reading on the outside of a pipe, but the survey, that's money. It's a lot of yeah, money to mm -hmm. install that on every household to right. monitor the, the waistline. So there is the paddle wheel, like you said, is going to get clogged up with stuff. There's technology available, but it, it's, it's so Speaking expensive of, to put it on every individual house that. It's not going to be, you know, feasible or practical by any stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> Speaking of technology, let's see if it pulls it up. We just upgraded the systems at the well houses, where now that me and Kevin are our two supervisors, can see when the wells are running. We can see what the pressure is from our phones. It was potluck before we came in. We lose three wells. We had no idea. Now we do. 4:30 this morning, Kevin and I were on the phone because we had an issue. Awesome. And then my last it was question, just a computer glitch, but right. you know we, we were on it and within leads, minutes. And that leads me into my last question. So there, there's reports and, and actual you know incidents of people attacking uh, municipal water systems. Um, so I'm assuming you guys are using software like like on your mm -hmm. phone and apps and stuff like that to monitor. Do you guys have like systems that would detect that where elevated levels are coming up? You get an update. Yeah, we we, we like, like so we test it every day and actually cameras are installed being installed at each well house, okay. which go to our phones, but we'll know when somebody walks in the Well, I think even one of them was like a software hack where somebody's yeah, going in it's change. protected the, by this, a special thing. This system <laughs> is actually behind Probably triple um, guarded. three different um, virus protections and firewalls, firewalls, firewalls and stuff yeah. like that. We, yeah. Our IT guy does good, and then the uh, company we bought this from, they added an extra one. Yeah, right. and yeah so they're, they're, it, this, so. it is triple protected that we can't have somebody actually just Somebody can log into the city office remotely, but they can't get to that system without yeah, well, I going One more question. I heard you say 17 point something. Is that, you said PPM, is that, what is that in degrees of like hard to with the hardness is? Is that the 17? That's um, where we are. Okay. It's part. If you pull it back up, it does, it does show. I mean, that's, that's the stuff that builds up on the seals and causes them to leak. And I let, I listen to my water, and then if I have doubts, I look at the meter. I'm lucky I got one of the newer ones you guys put in a couple years back. Yeah, the double thing oh, with the new ones, they close right through there, no wheels. 
the older ones have the wheels that catch everything. You can watch that, that yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sheet. It might be on another. Sorry. Is it on your sheet? Or is it we only took the chart off of that, and that was not on the small chart. Yeah, it's on another paper. Yep. Yeah, it's on the actual, it's on the actual water quality yeah. report. The, 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 just so you guys know, too, the water quality report, we're, we're required to put it out there for everybody. Like I said once before, we try to get it in April. We're not supposed to have it done until July, but I like to be efficient as well as Kevin. And actually, if we ask Jim, we probably drive him nuts because if he gets us something to do, we're done with it. Like, we're sending it back to him because we, we just want to tell him. It's on the web web page. Our IT guy also on the web page does the stuff. Yeah, on the water quality report that's typed out here, it's seventeen point one parts per million, which equals one grain. So when you have somebody come in and set a water softener up, you can tell them what that number is. They can actually get you to the right setting. It probably it's probably all seventy sixteen. So we well, that was it. Could have been yeah. from the last. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, 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 they fluctuate. It, these the results come in, and they're they're never. If they're always the same, I got to question something because yeah. it's, they're actually we're going to find out why numbers are the same. Now, when I'm when I'm treating the wastewater at the plant, yeah, I want my numbers to come down low and be close to the same all the time. But they still are never right on the same number every time. I have a couple questions, and kudos to your you both and your team. I can't imagine what kind of job um, you have. Ma'am, do you mind standing at the mic just so we can hear you? No, I'm good. I'll, I'll talk loud. Okay, okay. But thank you. Um, water filters. Sorry if I sound dumb, but they're in the basement because everyone's saying go downstairs and look. Is that Wherever what your water comes in. Okay. Like, you might that, not have a basement. That's the meter deal. Yeah, we don't. Some of them are the come right in the garage. Yeah. So they might uh, be in the garage or in the basement. Mine's interior. Yeah, they pick some of them are in the garage wall. Crawl into a cave. Crawl space. Yeah, you can have a crawl space. Depending on your house, it could be a crawl space. Okay, all right. And so on the sewer, on the outside, where is the town responsible for, and then where is the resident responsible for? Okay, responsibility for sewer issues. In town, not in Well, in town. I know, I, sewer we issues, if you have a blockage or you call and say, hey, I have sewer coming into my house, mm -hmm. we're going to come out, the city's going to come out, and we're going to look at the manhole above and below your property to see if, make sure the main is flowing correctly. If the main's flowing correctly, we, we come back and inform you that, hey, you're gonna need to get a plumber, our lines are flowing, because we basically look at the flow to say, hey, this line's three quarters full above your house, it's still three quarters full below your house, the, the main's flowing properly, because if you have a blockage that's coming from the main into your house, the manhole above your house is gonna be filling up, so. Okay. But what we tell you to do is get a plumber, um, have them open up the up the main or the lateral from and your that's house. Outside, right? Outside. Mm -hmm. It can be there can be clean outs outside the house, or mm -hmm. there's they only, may only have a, a clean out inside where it looks okay. like a little wide the cap. The one. older homes are basically inside. The newer homes are required so, to have an outside. Okay, so, we had an issue, and they, we called someone out. They were out in the front yard doing something. Yep, yep. Okay. They can have a clean out right there. So basically, the plumber would come in. They would snake your line out, open it up that the water's flowing. They could actually televise your lateral to see if there's a break that was causing it or if there was tree root okay. causing it. Now, okay. you're responsible for opening the, the line mm -hmm. from the house all the way to the main, making it free and clear. That is your that is the homeowner's responsibility. Okay. Now, once it's open, if you have a plumber and they televise, or they stick a camera down there and they see a break that is out underneath the street, Give us a call because once you hit the curb face and you're out into the blacktop, very expensive to repair blacktop, dig up, and all that. We own from curb anything that's underneath of the road itself. The city would repair, but it's it's on the property owners to prove where that break is. Thank you. Appreciate it. And my last question. So folks that have outside water, like pools and things like that, is is there not a, a uh, way to have a meter out there because other towns have that where, where we're not using or paying the sewer for water that's never going down the drain. I, I have friends that have pools and like that I live in Emmitsburg. It's cheaper for them to fill it off the hose than call the truck. 
No, and yeah, but just, we're also just, paying sewer for that. Yeah, but even even that is still yeah. cheaper for them. My my sister has a pool over here on Trevania Terrace. She said, yeah, it was it's cheaper for her to fill that pool up than right it is to top. call a tanker. Oh yeah, I don't call a tank. I fill the water up. But what I'm saying is because you're paying sewer on top yeah. of that. But and it, so there's towns that have meters on the outside where they you know they don't charge you for the sewer that's actually not going back in the drain that's what i'm asking that would have to be an additional account set up which which we do not do but that, that again that is if i would call a tanker i would even though say i put ten thousand gallons in the pool if i call an order ten thousand gallons i'm paying more from the tanker than i would have just running ten thousand gall gallons and paying the sewer bill gotcha. okay that. so you're saying i've never called it's, it Truck, yeah, it, it is more expensive to get the tanker in to it's fill up like than it would be for you to pay the water oh, and sewer okay. combined on that fill up. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. I, of course, have a couple more questions. Okay. <laughs> I do appreciate your job. You guys do. I know you get a lot of fun, but you, you do a good job. Um, as far as um, you were talking about the electricity and how much it takes to run the plant, I know it's a controversial subject. Um, has any alternatives for electricity been looked at to help yes. with just the plant period? Yes. We're, yeah. looking, we're looking at all of our facilities yes. to get to possible solar panels. Okay, awesome. Now, granted, we've actually did the process, I can speak a little bit to that, that at the plant, we do not have enough space at the plant to actually do the behind the meter, what they call the net meter, where you would have the solar panels on your side using all the electric there. We do not have enough space to put enough panels in to offset all of the electric. So I mean we're 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 investigating other means of actually having and of course the term solar farm where you would have an, an off site spot. That's what up. I was wondering or if anybody we're would looking we are looking volunteer for that. We are course. looking into all of that. We've actually had awesome. a uh, presentation to the Camp Mary Council on that process of doing that. So we're still hashing out whether or not that is a good way to go, actually putting it into a farm, into somewhere off of city property. And is anybody looking, I, I mean, I know we're getting some gov government money in for different things, um, but I know it happens periodically as far as grants specifically. For we're always, your, we're looking for all grant, every grant we okay. can possibly get to save money. I understand. Um, another question, I'll probably be more to the administrative side. So, and this is a me problem. I have a horrible time getting anything out in the mail. I pay just about everything online now. Um, and it, especially when at certain times I'm busy or <clears throat> my son is not well, even, even getting the check to the city office. I mean, yeah, that's a me problem. But um, to pay the bill online, I mean, it's less expensive than it used to be. It used to be a flat $30 fee, but it's still $3 per every 100 gallons. And when using the system, because I tried it recently, um, and it's, it's hard to know when you get the email back to make sure it's not a scam, Do you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you go to set up an account, then you get an email back, but it's not a Tommy Town email, and it makes you a little hesitant, and it's also $300. Now, and if, you're, if you don't have kids, $3 for 100 gallons might not be that much, but when you have kids and you're using the amount of water I am, it's a good bit. And so it's, it's three dollars per hundred dollars paid, right? Right. Not, not get. You were saying. You're saying. I just wanted right. to clarify. You were saying for every hundred gallons. Three, right. It's yeah, three dollars for every hundred dollars that you have to pay. So if your yes. bill's three hundred dollars, you're paying nine dollars. Right. We, if it's six hundred dollars, you're paying right. six dollars. Right. It's a third-party processor that does the credit card payments for water sewer bills. We are not. We don't do credit cards ourselves. Um, if you come to City Hall, you can only pay cash, check, money order. Uh, to pay by credit card, you have to do it online. It's a third-party processor. Credit card companies charge a fee to use the credit cards. If we absorb that cost, we're going to have to make it up somewhere else because now you're taking it away from your. What about the bank the town order. uses, though? Couldn't it be pro processed through the bank that the town? There's still going to be a similar processing fee because those fees are generally two and a half to three percent for credit card companies. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes there's a flat, you have but if you perhaps use debit 50 cents. Instead of credit, and, and this is still fees. Because when you use debit, yeah. banks don't, mm -hmm. they don't charge as much as a bank. But at your credit. bank, we can't just pick a bank that may not cover everybody. But they do have a Dropbox up well, in the city hall, yeah, too, which has been just, very um, handy. Because 
I just I put my notes, a lot of them online. I'm just saying for our own bank, and then I know from being in banking, if you use debit instead of credit, and that's why a lot of people work there from Walmart but only take credit because, again, it's it's actually you end up paying more for products because the bank, and I, I understand that, but using a debit card, it, it does not, if you press debit, it doesn't charge, the, the bank doesn't charge you as much or anything at all. And that may be, but we rely on third-party processing because we, we are not in the business to process those credit cards. To have it available online would cost us more to get that system set up than to have a company who already offers that online for you to pay. And as far as getting that email back, how well is that vetted from my information? Because it's That's really up to weird. third party. Huh? Yeah, that will be outside of us. I was in the office just Friday and somebody paid their bill online and they called right away and, and talked to Heather and Kathy. They'll, they'll tell you. We don't, actually get the Don't be afraid. Email. To just pick up the phone and say, hey, I just want to make sure my payment went through. And that was her question because she got the late notice. When you, when you pay your bill mail. online like that, they get you it. get an email, we also get an email. I, mean, I actually have access. I can see that there's when that what house pays by using electronic means on the computer. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's instantaneously. They, they get it. So if you don't feel comfortable, just just call in the office. They'll, they'll help you. Okay, thank yeah, you. If, you, if, you have, if it's an email you're not sure you want to click on because you think it's spam and it's going to go give you a virus, call the office. Okay. We can we can see it as well. Okay. Thank you for that. And um, my last question, then I'll shut up, <laughs> is as far as coming growth, um, because our it, we have you have a certain capacity, and mm -hmm. I didn't keep that number in my head, um, but all the growth that's being looked at. How much of that capacity are we set to handle at this point? If we get rid of the I and I on the sewer side, we have the capacity once we get down to what we're doing with right now with the I and I coming in, we're gonna be dictated from the state. So I mean that again, sole property. I know that's a hot topic of everybody we're annexed in. We actually now get to control that that hey, we can't do it right now because we're not set on our side. So it is, it's kind of, if we wouldn't have annexed that property in, they could have went to the county and did, possibly did sand mounds, uh, septic tanks, and had private wells, which we wouldn't be controlling. Now we get to say, wait a minute, slow up a little bit. We have to get our ducks in a row for what we already have before you can go do what you need to do. Because we're not allowed to do anything unless it's approved by the state. We can't tell them what we're going to do. They're, they're not going to. We, they just can't go in and slap 400 homes up and say the state will come in and they, they will. We have to follow their rules, and their rules are very, very strict on everything, no matter what it is. If it involves the state, you're not telling them what to do. <laughs> so the, we talked about the standards for drinking water, what we deliver to your homes. The standards for what leaves our wastewater treatment plant are then put out into kind of the creek over there. That all feeds into Chesapeake Bay. So you can imagine the standards set for us to get nitrates in the right place, to get all of this. It has to be such clean water to be put back out uh, into nature. Nitrogen phosphorus is the big, big to-dos because that creates algae balloons. Mm -hmm. Nitrogen and phosphorus coming in. Nitrogen coming into the plant is usually in the hundreds. It has to be below five milligrams per liter in the water when leaving. Um, phosphorus, we're usually around 20 parts per million or whatever, 20 milligrams per liter. We have to be, right now, we have to be at a point two leaving. So the chemicals, you're constantly chewing chemicals up. Biologically, it can remove that stuff, but it can't get it down to the, that low of number without the help of chemicals. So, and just said in a training class a week ago, um, the state is looking at lowering the phosphorus number from 0.2 to 0.15 or even lower than that. Which doesn't seem like a huge change in number, but it's a dramatic, well, when I first dramatic start, when I, change for us. When I first started here in 2000, the phosphorus level that could go out the plant was 2.0. And from in 23 years, it's went from a 2.0 to a 0.2 and it's going lower. When I first started, we didn't need chemicals to treat the phosphorus to get it down to that low. When they changed it and went from what they call biological nutrient removal to enhanced nutrient removal, game changer, it's chemicals. That's all, I mean, there are some other filters. 
but then filters cost. And just they, they change their a lot. They change a lot. Now that I'm in the office more, you're constantly getting emails. It's constantly changing. It's constantly moving target for us to try to hit for the city to make sure that we're and we report those numbers monthly, monthly to the state to tell them where we are. And we are actually in our permit renewal for the plant right now. We are. It has been 12, 12 months since we sent our application in, and it's an 18 month process. So I'm waiting to see what our new numbers are. So I know where I have to come talk and ask for help. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Georgiana. I'm new here from, Cal um, from Howard County. Mm -hmm. I, I purchased a home in Town. Well, they call it so many different names. <laughs> I give up. It's Tawny 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 Tawny. 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 It depends. Where's, where's, where's the W with the vowel? I don't see it. <laughs> <don't make> <laughs> born, born and raised here, it's one way. If you're not from here, it's Taney Town. If we do it, Town. just know who the new people are. <laughs> yeah, because Taney Town, I study Civil War. So Taney Town was originally from the Civil War. His mm -hmm. name was... Long think, before. We were yeah. long before that. Yes, yeah, so I know. We passed on generation, generation. But my question, I have two questions. Um, I have asthma and allergies. And sometimes I'm wondering if water might trigger it if it's not... It has so much things in there. <laughs> so what I'm asking is, does the city, I mean, we pay so much for taxes, because the taxes are very high here also, and then you're paying for mortgage, you're paying for water. So is there any way the city can provide for us something to test the water, like a, get like a sample? Well, we, in fact, if you get the packet, all of our water reports are in there, our water quality reports, and it says everything that's in there. And if you're mm -hmm. having the kind of medical things, that's something to provide to your doctor. Okay. And they can tell you what in there might be triggering it. Um, okay. I have not heard of our water triggering any asthma or anything like that. That would be okay. highly unusual. I just want to ask, and some of my neighbors on the same block, they have different water issues. They have the, the water, I notice when I do the dishes, with Cascade, it still leave a spot on there. Even if I wash it by hand, it still leave a spot on there. Hard water. Hard yep. water. It's, hard. Hard. it's, the calcium. Hard water. it's the calcium that is naturally found. Yeah, building up. Okay. In the groundwater, that is the natural um, calcium. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I kind of knew, but I said, because <laughs> yep. I went to You're college. Fine. So, another question I have is my one of my old um, neighbors, she couldn't be here today because she's a nurse. She worked from home 14 hour shift. Mm -hmm. She's, uh, she just bought a house there too, and there's a water, there's a sewage issue, and the city is there. They dig the hole in front of her house. Are you, are you talking about water? At 70, so water. 75 Bristow Station? Or 30, yes. yes. Oh, you know? Yep. 30. 30. 30. We, were, we were out. It's a, it was a water leak on the, on the, uh, on the new. new I bikes. must have missed you guys, because I looked out the window. I'm on the same block I didn't see. I would have come out there, but. Yeah. She want to know if she's responsible for the water because we we talked to her. Yeah, we, we talked talk to her. In we person. were there with her like okay, forty-five good, okay. minutes the other okay, good, day, good. answering everything from the that trash to the water to whatever. That being said, <laughs> she said ask many ways to go into the yep. meeting. Yep, yep, that's she's fine. Terrified. That, that being said, if you have a water service that that, that you have a leak on your line, the city is responsible from the main to the curb stop yes. at the at the <clears throat> sidewalk. From there in is the homeowner's responsibility to maintain and repair. Right now, Meads Crossing, it is still the developer. We yeah. have not taken any of that over, so developer builder is taking care of that. But our meters are all inside of the home, mm -hmm. so if a leak happens on that line outside, we're, we're losing water that we're pumping and treating to try to get the people, but it's not costing you. It, it's costing, it's costing city you money in, in a roundabout way we're pumping more water than we're losing but it doesn't add into your water bill if it does if it doesn't go through the meter mm -hmm. it won't be counted and then the water bill because i have mom and my friends are homeowners the water bill am i right is every every quarter every three months every three months yes and the average is based on consumption right we actually take a an actual reading our guys ride around with a hand, handheld computer and we take your Take your actual reading of your meter. What you and actually can see that? Can we see that? Yep. We can. We can show it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when we're done here, we'll show you. We're done. We'll, we'll show you because you have. 
we, we know you have one of the new, in Meads Carlson, we know you have the new meter. So we can show you what to look for on the meter to, to be able to read your own meter. Anybody has questions with, after this, if you find that you don't, you have which one, we can talk to you and let you know how to read your meter and exactly when I was walking around with the eye pearl meter, I was showing you what we can actually see from the stream. So. Can, I, can I also mention, so um, some time ago, I had a water heater line bust, and the water was on, we, we have a duplex and one side we weren't using. It ran for probably a week. I did not find out, and luckily it happened right before I got my water bill, got the water bill and saw it and was able to run down there and, and find it. If you have a leak where the water does not, it is a leak inside, the water does not contain, contain sewage, like it doesn't, it doesn't go, down go down the drain, a drain or anything mm -hmm. like that, and you bring the the water bill and your work order or receipt for the work right. order to prove that you had this issue, they will help you with the sewer fees. They will take some money off. Um, you just have to make that effort. Um, and so I did because I think mine was probably about. Mm -hmm. And that's, probably that's only dollars. that's only in a situation where the water doesn't go down the drain, like a pipe in in your basement in your leaks house. and it sprays all over your basement, um, yeah. you know, and goes Spray out your sump pump, and it doesn't go down a drain. We just had one where it was at, um, I'm going to say on Maryland Avenue, the, it was a pipe burst in the ceiling, ruined the lady's whole office, and she worked from home, so it was kind of. Yeah. Computer, she had all these bills and stuff, and it was actually come in, talk with Heather at the front office. Jim will get involved. I mean, when it comes down to negotiating the bills, that is front office, city manager, mayor and council. They they may get involved, but usually it gets to Jim's level. But um, they have worked very well when it's when you come in and you have a hardship like that that they can they look at it and. Come in, talk over with everybody. It doesn't do anybody any good. I, we understand we take emergency calls after hours when you're going through the situation. I don't know how many times I can tell you I've been screamed at on the phone, but you, we have to keep a level head. It's just try to talk. And again, as Randy said earlier at the beginning, you might not like what we have to say. We're just trying to give you the information that we can give you to get through the situation. I, I, Usually if something's bust or whatever, call us. We'll shut your order off from outside because I'm sure our guys will be quicker than the plumber. We can <laughs> shut your order off outside. That way you don't don't hesitate to call us. We have guys on call 24-7. If they can't do it, we'll do it. If sewer issues, it's better to call us first. We're not charging you to come out and pop manholes and look before you find out. God forbid, it's on, I, I don't want it to be on our side, but I'd rather see us come out and check and find out it's maybe something that we were, it was caused by us and we can get it rectified than you pay a $200 bill for a plumber to come out to tell you it's not yours. Mm -hmm. that, uh, rather have us come out and do that check first and then say, let, give you the guidance of where to go. Just call the city office number after hours and follow the promise. It'll tell you where to go. After hours and we, we get one. We get your voice on our phones, your message, not an automated message. Whatever you tell us, we what, get. What you, leave, what you leave on that answer machine comes right to us in a. Uh, it's a lot better than what we used to because when I first started, hey, go down to 313 East Baltimore Street, the guy will leave. All right, you get there, and they're like, we didn't go. <laughs> like that person wrote down the wrong address. So now it's, we're getting the right information exactly. Tell us exactly what's going on. If it's a five minute, if we don't care. Just tell us. So we know what to tell our guys as they're going in. Because Judy mentioned, and, and, and I said to him, I, you can answer a question. I know when we first moved here, very long time ago, um, I had an issue, and the head town was great at giving me a break. You know, everybody in the office and the mayor at the time, they, everybody was great. But you mentioned the work order. Mm -hmm. And as you know, a lot of us do the work ourselves. So there's not necessarily a work order. I can give you pictures. Well, yeah, you can have pictures, pictures, but I think receipts. Obviously, you're going to have yeah. to buy things to do yeah. that. Yeah, if, you're, if you're doing a repair, if you bring in the, if you go to Lowe's and you're buying four or five parts. Okay, so that would still, you could still. Okay, because I didn't know if things had tightened up in that area because, of course, people can buy it out of That's true. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Because pictures say a lot too, and the guys, if they come to the house and see it, then. then our guys are probably going to take pictures of your issues too. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Way, yeah. We'll, we'll document it in our work order system mm -hmm. and our complaint system. So 
10 years from now, you call back and we're like, hey, I think we were at that address. We'll pull it up and be like, hey, this is what they fixed. Yeah, and good information just for overall when you're doing it yourself, which I had to learn the hard way. Because you now can go to Home Depot and rent equipment. Mm -hmm. That stuff is not good for the terracotta. <laughs> and <laughs> it's different than what regular plumbers use because I one year I was going to be, I was going to do this. Yeah. So when you're running equipment, it, I know it can, I mean, it, there can it's be a huge damage. difference because I heard it in my pipes. I'm like, that's not. And then the plumber came in and of course used something else. I still ended up having to pay a plumber. Yeah. Um, you just have to know what you have. Yeah. And a lot of times if you've never done it before, that's why I like the videos, mm -hmm. something like that could be done. Mm -hmm. I think that would be huge. Um, there are certain things, I mean, I knew, but I know a lot of other people have mentioned not to flush because they'll say these white are flushable. No, they're not. Please <laughs> no, do not. They're not please, flushable. Please do not. <laughs> Flushable whites, please do not flush them. Yes. They do not dissolve and break down like toilet paper does. There's three things that you're supposed to flush, and I don't want to have to say them. One of them is toilet paper. <laughs> the other one's a liquid. The other one's a solid. Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing not else grease. should go in your lines. Yes. They just shouldn't. They should go in the trash. And yeah. I'll also say that garbage disposals are terrible. I, I know yeah. they keep sticking them in these houses because they seem like a great thing, but that build up in your lines still happens. Yeah. And the build up in the lines, because uh, I went through this, um, you know, you go to the store and you get the best chemical stuff. Vinegar, hot, hot, hot water, vinegar, and um, Dawn dishwasher soap, if you keep pouring it, that stuff is better than and better for your pipes. <laughs> and their pipes. Yeah, but I mean, do it because I've tried both, uh, you know. And, you know, my, my nephew looked at me and he wanted to do the chemicals oh, okay. that you get at the store. No, yeah, those are terrible. That, that oh. hot water, vinegar, and, and baking, uh, soda. Ba baking soda also helps and Dawn, only Dawn dishwasher soda. It really does grease. cut through. But sometimes you have to keep doing it and it won't get down a little bit, but eventually, yeah, it works. So we talked about you know, contacting the city for assistance on things like that you have water leaks, sewer leaks. Remember, this, people get scared of government. This is local municipal government. We're the people closest to you. That's why we give out our cell phone numbers to residents, because we want to hear from you. We are humans helping you, okay? We have a level of compassion you may not find from governments above us, because we are here with you, we see you every day. So when you call, just, we are literally here to help, and you'll hear our voice to help you, okay? Don't be intimidated because it's government, big bad government. It's not how it works here in Twine Town. It's really not how it works in municipalities in general, um, especially small ones like ours. We, most of us, live in the town. Of course, myself and all of council live in the in this city. Um, a lot of our staff do as well. They are going to help you. That is their job because they don't want to hear from myself or council if they haven't done their job right. Okay. So please, if you have an issue, if you have a question, call the city office. Call one of us. We have, we are compassionate with you. We understand the issues. We've probably been through the issues ourselves. This is not a big bureaucracy uh, that's going to stifle you or do whatever it is. We are humans helping humans here in the city. All right. Another question there. Well, just on payments, one last thing. Am I correct that the city will not accept electronic payments? Electronic oh, yeah, payments. You mean like Venmo and stuff like that? No. Or? I do all my online banking <coughs> through Bank of America. When I go on and pay my bill, they actually will mail you a check. Right. right. Where everybody else, it's an electronic transfer from them to another bank for that account. They don't mail checks to my credit card companies and things like that. The only one that they mail a check to is the city of Tawnytown. And then I have to, instead of allowing one day, mm -hmm. I have to allow seven days and then pray that the post office doesn't send it through Florida. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. And we can look at that. I mean, our, our bank account goes through, I think we're with Truist on that account. So we can talk to them as well. should be an electronic transfer. I don't see a reason why they can't. Just bam, it goes. They have to check this but that's again, that's why our water bills go out a month ahead of time, you know, for time to, to plan ahead. The other thing I want to tell you is yes, we mail your water bill quarterly. You can pay monthly. That's what my wife and I do. We send $50 a month to the city, it gets credited to the account. When the water bill shows up, it tells us these payments were applied, this is what's remaining. 
So if the way your budgeting and your brain works is more monthly, call the city. Heather can tell you this is what you average. If you send us this much a month, it'll help you budget better monthly, okay? There's nothing that says you can only pay every three months. You can set it up yourself to be a monthly budgeting thing and mail it. And we can help you figure out what amount is appropriate for you. Okay? So I have yep. one last question. So for new residents, I've been here for a while, but for new residents, how do they know that if you call the city that they can help you? And I called when I first got here, my water bill was, it was like $1,200. Mm. And I called and I'm like, what is going on? And um, they said, well, you have a leak. And that was the answer to me. And so I called the plumber. Of course, I didn't have a leak. It was the pool and the sewer. And then I didn't understand the whole water sewer thing. Um, so how, I mean, I think it would be good if the city would send out to new residents and maybe remind everyone every so often that, hey, if you have an issue, call us. We're here to help. Right. Um, and same thing, you know, we had an issue. It was a holiday weekend. Um, we had a call, I don't know, some ungodly person that would only come out and do some kind of electric thing in the thing, and it cost us over $2,000. So, you know, that's good to know that if I, we would have called you, you would have said, yeah, it's your, yours, and then call them out because it took them, you know, four or five hours to come out. So, you know, things like that. How do we, how do the people, new residents, like her, no, just, yeah, just new. Here, how would they know um, that kind of stuff? Right, so we're working on improving through, I think, Mish and Economic Development having a more or less a welcome packet that goes out, talks about businesses, but also about services that we offer. Right. So we're continually trying to figure out how to improve that. Of course, we know when people move in because when you settle, the title company has to tell us about the water system and everything like that. So we have that information. It's just finding the best way to get it out to them and what information is useful. I don't want to give you a 300-page owner's manual of living in the city. You know, that's outrageous. But we are trying to refine this process to make sure that information gets out there. Thank you. But we have 8,000 residents that we're trying to, to work that with. But no, I appreciate that. And I know we are working on ways to get kind of welcome packets out to new residents here. Other questions? I don't oh. see a lot of quizzical looks, so we're doing okay. Yeah. When are you going to get online uh, payments? Are you guys working on a, on a Online. You can pay online. It's not through the city directly. It's a third-party processor. Mm -hmm. um, there is an additional processing fee to use a credit card for that. But we can talk to you if you want to talk to... Uh, Jay afterwards, he can give you kind of information to access that. Okay. Yep, but it does charge you three dollars for every hundred dollars. I've got one thing that bothers me a lot, and we talked about it out there. But <laughs> if you don't tell us, we can't fix it. Don't complain about it on social media. Just come to us. Honest to God, I my phone's on twenty four seven. I know the mayor's Kevin's all Kevin's, the time. Yep. We get emails. If we can't fix it, we'll tell you how to fix it or who to contact the right person. We Facebook have has never people. fixed anything. No. Let's just be honest about it. So there's, there are a couple people you can call. First off, you can call City Hall. It's 410-751-1100. The other number you can write down is mine because my phone's on all the time. 410-236-7807. I, I said it quick. Some are still pulling out their pen and paper, but that shows up. On this phone, it's literally in my pocket or next to my bed all the time. So 410-236-7807. If you can't get a hold of somebody, if you don't like what you heard from somebody, you call me. If there's a problem, I can call these guys and get it resolved. He knows. He knows. <laughs> I do call them. I think that's great, but just like my experience, when someone calls up there and says, you have a leaky toilet, instead of you know talking to them, you know people get frustrated. And they reach out to you know their neighbors, their you know whatever, and they say, well, what's your experience? And that's when the whole you know everything goes out. Everybody brings up all their last experiences. So I think just maybe some customer service. From we the front we can refine those processes. Yeah, sure. yeah there should yeah. be a yeah. set of steps that they're told. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's not the first thing. Well, you have a leak. You know that, yeah. that kind of upsets. Mm -hmm. upsets oh, I'm sure it does. Absolutely. That right. should be also. That should be. They may say that first, but then they should be saying. Exactly. There should be a follow-up. Let's, let's, yes. let's get a check X, Y, and Z. Yeah, we can continually refine these processes to so get you that. Check that do you check this X, Y, and Z as Randy said, and you can't find anything, and you still are having issues. That call back and say, hey, can I get someone out here to check? Help. Right, and I mean, I, I, I think the, it, it's it's good to know that you know the residents of this town are not. Stupid, right? That's the first thing they yeah. check is making sure that their right. roads are running. Um, uh, assuming they know what to look for. You're right. Yes. So some of the flappers in the toilets. Yeah, no. I mean, it can be a minuscule, like just a no, very little we, bubble. We had a bill and we found out it was our toilet. You know, you obviously we didn't call nobody because we, that's what we realized it was. So yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you actually yank it out of there, out of service, yeah. and look at it. You don't really see the warp in that that rubber there. Absolutely. But yeah, we'll continually refine those things to make sure you're getting the information to you as soon as we can. Any other questions, concerns, complaints? I'll accept certain complaints. Real quick. Oh, Jim, yes. So we talked a little bit about like water heaters and calcium and everything. Um, I'm just going to throw out there, please check your manual for your heaters before you drain it. Um, different, different heaters have different you know, processes. Some have a bladder that you don't want to drain the tank because the bladder will fold in. So we're talking kind of you know general terms. Um, you know, please don't go home and, and you know do Just start draining your water. And, and, oh, the city told me to you know to do this. Um, you know, check your check your manuals for your equipment before you go. Before That's a very good point. We don't know what what appliances you have, and we are not the owner's manual for those appliances. So we're, right, we're just kind of speaking in, in broad broad terms, um, and and also. The mayor mentioned. We will not you know, hold you responsible. Our, you say that, but no, someone will. I will not. I can't speak for everybody else, but I won't talk about it. We talked a little bit about, about high bills and you know the, the city working with people. Um, there there are limits to that. Um, you know we can we can help to a point, but when it comes down to it, you know if if there was a leak and it did, you know it was a leak in a toilet and your bill was really high, if the city incurred the cost of producing that water and treating that water, there's only so much we can do without having to pass on that expense to other homeowners or other accounts. So when it comes to the actual usage, you know, we can work out payment plans and things like that, but ultimately our goal is going to be to make the city whole. So a situation where, you know, a pipe breaks in your basement or, you know, the, like the office, you know, incident that was described, that's something you know we can work with you on the sewer side, but but if it you know if it went down the drain and we treated it at the plant and we spent money on electricity and chemicals to do that, there's only so much we can do, and I, I just want to be you know upfront about that. You know we can't give away the product without someone else having to pay for it. So you know while in a perfect world maybe there would be some account, you know, reserve account set up or something like that, that would come out of, you know, other people's pockets to cover that. So I just, I just want to clarify that, you know, there are limits to what we can do. We, we try to be helpful. We don't, we don't like to send the guys out to turn people's water off for non-payment, you know, and, and we're willing to work with people. Um, and if you reach out to the city earlier, when you when you get a you know an unusually high bill, that is helpful as well. We frequently get calls right at the due date, and then we have to try to scramble to figure stuff out. Um, you know, oftentimes it, it even goes as late as shutoff day, and at that point there's already late fees and things like that. So if you see something that's not normal, please contact us you know right away, and don't wait until the due date because that's also when the two ladies in the front office are seeing customer after customer at the window and opening, you know, a huge stack of water sewer bills, and then they're getting the calls because somebody's bill was unusually high. So if you can, you know, call it to our attention when you see that bill rather than waiting until the last minute when everything else is piling on the two two ladies that do this, um, it would be very helpful. So. So he talked a little bit about, you know, where that money has to come from somewhere, you know. When our utility budget, we have two funds in our budget. We have our general fund, we have our utility fund. The utility fund is water sewer. That's it, okay? Everything else, your trash, your snow pile, all that stuff, that comes out of the general fund. The utility fund is meant to have revenue cover expenses. It is not like your electric company that's making a profit on their things. Our revenue needs to cover its expenses. And right now, we've reached that point where the revenue is now covering all of the expenses, whereas previously it had to be subsidized. You know, pulling money from savings, general fund, whatever it was. But in addition on that utility fund, we have capital projects. We talked about the Roberts Mill project coming up and others. That is being paid for partly from the ARPA money, but also still pulling out from our savings fund, okay? So again, we're not, taking in all this extra money to do these projects, we're still dipping into our savings to do those, but we need to get them done. We went so long without. 
and ARPA, we received, what, 7.4 7 7 .4 million dollars from the federal government for the COVID. And that gave us the opportunity to fix these problems that for years and years and years just kept compounding without being addressed. So fortunately, with that money, and that means our rates didn't have to go up, we didn't have to incur more debt, we're still paying off a crap ton of debt from years ago. When the state came in and said you had to replace your wastewater treatment plant, that's when rates started to go up because we incurred a tremendous, how much was the total debt, do you remember, Jim? I think it was 10 to $12 million for yeah. the plant. Uh, and of course, when the state says you have to do it, they're not giving you a check to do it either. Yeah. You know, you're right. they're giving you a timeline saying, this is what you're gonna have done. Yep, you better have this done in two years or we're shutting you down. So that's, that's kind of a longer history of those sorts of things. But yeah, the intent is revenue on water sewer is to cover expenses of water sewer. Okay. So, sir, I heard the city, uh, city manager, correct, sir? Yes. Thank you. Um, I heard him talk about there's not a, a pot of money somewhere. So my question, because I don't understand this, so mm -hmm. don't take this, you know, any other way. Um, so if there, if there could be a pot of money to help the residents are here in this town, what pot of money was was used to provide 28, well, but almost voted for $28,000 to the Habitat Humanity with their water and sewer? So what's the difference? Well, that money was earmarked in that special occasion by the council, not from money that came from residents, it's not from water sewer right. fees, not from taxes, that was from revenue we received from the cell towers, the cellular companies that put their antennas on our water towers. They earmarked, I think total was $8,460 to assist Habitat for Humanity. But it was almost 28k, right? That, that was the initial request, right, and the council decided not to do that much. Um, Habitat Humanity is a nonprofit organization that builds houses for those in need. Yeah, they are building, we call it a duplex on East Baltimore Street. They've been working for years to do it. Uh, they came to us because, as you know, everything is increased in cost, and all of a sudden that build was going to lose them an amount of money. So the council decided they're going to forgive a portion of what they owed for water sewer hookup fees so that they didn't go into the red on that project. We like having Habitat here. We want to make that, you know, a good partnership relationship. So that's why that decision was made. The the action, or excuse me, the, the methodology for that was actually Councilman Foster met with the city treasurer and the city manager to come up with a way that it was not going to come out of revenue received from residents. Okay, it's not taken from your taxes. It's not taken from your water sewer fees. It was taken from a different source that is not going to cost you more money. And that's great. No, I, I, I agree. Habitat of Humanity is a great organization. But with that, if you had the money for that, why couldn't there be a pot set up to help the residents when they're in need, is what I'm saying. Well, it, it depends on where it looks. Like I said, right now, are trying to balance that revenue with the expenditures. What I can tell you, if you're experiencing hardship, you know someone that is experiencing a hardship, the county has all of these programs already in place. And for us to duplicate that is unnecessary. You know, and we point people to that direction. Department of Human Services, they have all these programs in place that we work with to make that happen. For us to duplicate that is unnecessary and expensive yeah. when it's already in place. And and I, I get they that. do help yeah. you out. And I think that's what the, the town, some of the town, not all of them, but some of the town folks were upset about is you had a residence that had a huge water bill and then y'all were ready to give out 20 a K to Habitat Humanity, so I, I think- Well, yeah, we throw out the 28K. We were not ready to give out 28K. Well, thank Let's you put for it that, that councilman who came back and, and, and said he wasn't, he didn't support that, so thank you for him. Um, but, you know, that's why I think the issue mm -hmm. is, you know, you have, you say you have extra money and it's not, I, mean, I heard that, I was watching the council meeting that night, so I heard that, so that it wasn't coming from the residents, which right. is great, but if you had that extra money, you know, why not put it back to the residents? You know, and, you know, that's what I think the, the question is, you know. The, go ahead. The, the money that they're pulling there from, mm -hmm. that the cell towers are on our water tanks, that money is used to actually maintain the water tanks. Right. So we actually, just this past year, the tank right over here behind the side food line, as you can see, the four legs have not been painted because we hadn't had the cell company move their equipment yet. But now that they're moved, they'll be back in to finish that. But we still have another project over on the other end of town on Pump House Road for the, the standpipe mm -hmm. that needs to be done. The money that they use to pay for the Habitat for Humanity is coming from the money that we need to use to maintain these tanks. The cell companies are actually paying to maintain them for us now 
we're using that money to they put the equipment on there and they're putting stress on the tank so that money actually goes to that instead of us having to use your water and sewer bills to maintain the yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I do feel we need to set in conjunction with what you said as far as the pot money. Yeah. Sadly, I have had to use those services. They are not as easy to get as you might think. And I have I've had to go through the very long process of doing it. A lot of times they rely on local churches. Mm -hmm. and there are some wonderful people that have helped out, but it is not as easy and it's not a duplication of the service. Well, there's actually a new water program too. They just started, like they had energy assistance and it would cover help with electric bills and fuel costs, I think, for heating. They just started that same kind of program with water. They didn't used to have it for water, but they do now. So that's like new just in the last six months or something. something it's like that, very yeah. recent. And um, I'll check it out. I just yeah. I know that in the past, there has been a need. So I'll look to Right, I understand. And, and if we did a similar program, we're going to run into the same things because those that money has to come from somewhere else. He didn't say it was easy. It's just no. there's programs there. It's available. It's available. But I also know that I ever give a chance to give back because mm -hmm. my husband was sick, people helped me. Do you know what I mean? But there are plenty of good people if they know people locally. And we've had that in the past. Yeah. Right. So I, that's why, I, you know, something here in town, and, and like, it, it's good to know there's a new program, but I still think something like that, you know, um, is, is worth considering. Okay. But just well, to touch on the water tanks. We didn't just paint that to paint it. <laughs> we get we get inspected every year by the, the mm -hmm. our people, and then every three years by the state of Maryland, and we have to bring them up to code. So that it's not just a paint. It's not a pretty paint. That is a coating. That that's a special paint by a special company. They did the inside and outside. It, it's a process, and it's very 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 expensive. And there were four leaks on that tank. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's probably the first thing you see when you come in the town when you're looking up, right? It looks so nice now. Yeah. Yeah. It did before, yeah. but it does look nice. But and well, we didn't just paint it just to paint it. Right. We painted it because <laughs> we had to. And some of that cell phone money will actually work. I think over the next two or three years, we have it in the capital improvement for an additional third tank because we need more. We need more storage capacity. Not that we need the capacity for more building. We just need more capacity for what is to tighten up our system, right? To, and to go to deliver and, and, and make sure the pressures stay maintained. Because literally, when we took that tank out of pressure, the one at the west end of town was the only thing providing pressure. So, and when we take that one down to do the maintenance, please pay attention to your our Facebook post. Sorry. Absolutely, because it's going to affect water service. You know, when we take that one down, and the city has to be fed from this one tower. This one can't do the same amount that the other one can when it's by itself. Yeah. This is 150,000 gallons. That's 750,000 gallons there. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all so. might have this. I don't know. But, you know, kind of like the schools do when there's an emergency, they have a call list. Is that not something that y'all can do? Anything not currently, know? no. Okay. No. But trust me, we're going to get it out. We're going to post yeah. it out. We're going to ask you to do a, a mandatory water ban. We're going to ask you not to wash your cars. We're going to ask you ask you not to do so what are your grass. Is what you're saying. We're, we're going to put gonna have water for you, but we're not going to, you know, we don't want to waste the water. Right. On things that we, we don't have the water to feed your grass, okay? Yeah. That's or not a necessity. Or fill your bowl, or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, the school has that system because every year you fill out that piece of paper, mm -hmm. that's you. We don't have that program to get 8,000 residents' information into that sort of right. system. Yeah, we're trying to find the best that. ways to reach out in that looking at apps or something like that that people can have when they live here in the city, um, it's much harder. So we ask you to rely on Facebook, the city webpage, Twitter, um, certain things that actually has to go. We'll spend the money for our mailing out to you. Mm -hmm. You see postage is going up again. It's going to cost us a lot of money to do that. And again, that money comes from somewhere. Our revenue comes from the people, you know, with a few minor exceptions like cell towers, things like that. But overall, we are funded by you. And so we do the best we can with the money you entrust us with. And me as a firefighter, one more thing on that, with the water tanks. We let the fire departments know when we take those out. We let them know when we have water leaks, so they add extra trucks to make it safe. To bring in more water. Yeah. Ma'am? Sorry. Yeah. Is there, you, from what I was hearing, it's we're paying for water, sewer, and trash? The trash is in your taxes, okay. not your utility bills. That's what yep. I remember. Okay. So a question I have is, 
Is there a possibility that we can get recycle bins for the kitchen, you know, to put the recycle stuff in? In your house? Yes. That's no, we provide the bin for outside uh -huh. to put at the curb, but anything in the house you would be responsible for. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, I got spoiled in Howard County because they give <laughs> the it. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 If you want to pay their taxes, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And they give you their garbage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I should have just asked anyway. Because it doesn't hurt to ask. I'm going to have to buy something. Absolutely. I use, I use a box. You know, it was an Amazon box at one point. It's oh. in my kitchen. I just throw recycles in there and then take it out. Okay. If, for me, it doesn't have to be a fancy blue bin. No, me either. But no, we provide. We provide the outside recycling bin because we do encourage recycling. It saves a ton of money. The more recycling things go out instead of going into the trash, we pay different rates there. Um, and the trash cans, while we're on that topic, yes, you have to buy your own trash can. If the trash company breaks your can, you need to call us. Thank okay? you for telling me that. Yep. I'm sorry, because every I took pictures every time the trash guy comes. Yeah. He take the lid off, it looks like it's going to break soon, and he leave it in the middle of the road. He I know. They do that forever. And we're constantly working with them. I and the challenge, pictures. right, the challenges we have with that company, okay. first off, it's always different people that they're sending to do this. So it's like having to retrain. They um, actually, two they weeks ago, fired, fired but I was like, oh, and their whole crew. Oh, they awesome. The issues they were having, we were having. Yeah. So, so we're constantly working with them. The main thing is, with those problems, call us. We track them, okay. and then we go to them. And if they don't come through on replacing your trash can or whatever the issue is, we do have a way to essentially find them for that. If they break a trash can, you call us. They will replace your trash can, okay? Please be honest. If you run it over with your truck and it breaks, please don't blame the trash company. It's just going to cost money. And we're not talking about lids, right? I mean... You're not talking about just breaking lids, right? You're talking about not really. It's the trash can. Okay. If it can, if it can right. no longer hold trash, or they've broken the wheels right. off and you can't take gotcha. it down, okay. if it's a yes. can that has the lid that's attached to it, and you, they break the lid off of that can, literally, yeah. what what we what we'll end up asking, you guys contact us. We have your phone number. We actually pass that on to the contract manager. He should be reaching out to you, and literally, what they ask for is pictures of the can. So they can get you one that is comparable in price if they can't get the same one. So yeah. if you have a, I'm just gonna say a $200 trash can, they're not gonna show up with a $20 can. And, and if you have a $20 can, they're not gonna give you a $200 can. And speaking of costs, it is per household per month. For so basically, if you have four collections in a month. It call each household is eight dollars and fifty some odd cents. For four collections of trash and recycling and a month, cheap. it's yes. exactly. And, and I think of yeah, and I think of it's, you know them. I imagine their job is harder than y'all. So I, I I don't you know it's it is what it it's is. It's different. And, yeah, <laughs> different. Yeah, right. it's always, different. Always yeah. say it's a thankless job. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it's not. It, we're not being overly. I guess they're not charging us through the roof. Right. I mean, the other company that you was, you pay for. was more than double. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was we had through bills. the whole con through the whole five year contract. It's a couple million dollars. It was double for those next lowest bid. Yeah, and the reason I ask is all my trash can lids are off, and so yeah, it's not a big deal. Are they the ones that are attached? That were, well, they, they just have the little curves on it. You know? Yeah, you, you can actually pull off. So I just want to make that yeah. clear: it's not if the lid is broken. Um, it's right. actual trash can. Okay. Any final questions before we excuse you for the day? I appreciate you all coming out. I know we lost a group of people here. Uh, who I'm sure had other things to do. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, please hang around, talk to us outside. You have one more? What's that? Do you have any, um, like any kickoff meetings in the, in the different communities, or is it only held at the library? Generally, we do things like this here at the library because it is kind of a central place that has space to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when we do things, we're kind of put out where it's located. If you want something for your neighborhood itself, please reach out to me, reach out to your city manager. We're happy to come out and do something in your neighborhood as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we just met with Asia. We're going to have problems as well.
kind of have it up here. Yeah, I mean, they can set up a meeting if they want to have us. We can do it anywhere, yeah. We'll, we'll set up anything. When you said you had the guys expecting our wells, what I get through my through the bank, that check has everything on it. Because I have that built in. I said, what are you doing here? If it was electronic transfer, it would go right to the bank. And it's done. And we did when we got there. And I'd like to compliment you on that young man's boy. And I. You take, you take the little off of the ladies. Right. Okay. You were employed about the well. So. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so I, much. I have proof of the disc that he's out there checking the Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thank you again. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you all.